go to a deaf school where they learn sign language. And we provide meals and safe accommodation during school breaks. One of the biggest problems here for young women when they come back from school, if they're done in August and don't go back until a month later, with nothing to do, there's a real chance of pregnancy. Teen girl pregnancy here is a major issue. And we're working with one of the uh, teachers at Nimuga Special to provide a place for some of these girls to live and activities to do so they're not out there in, in trouble. <clears throat> My partner, William Aboya, started a Rescue a Child to Learn program, and I'll talk some more about that. But basically, it's if you have an A student, has to go home because he has no school fees, and you see him selling water with a donkey cart in Mbita. That's unacceptable, you know. The students that he supports now, and when I left it was 20 something in 2012, it's 75 kids now in five schools that get support. They're good students, they stay in school, and part of what we're about, and I'll explain later, uh, supports that. But we want to create and maximize Shambas whose produce goes to the students' accounts for school fees. If we are successful in these next three years, more and more money is going to come out of the Shambas and go directly to student school fee accounts. Part of the disabled and disadvantaged, uh, we talked before, was support water needs. We're initiating that project right now. Volunteer teaching. Uh, this person is Anna Martin. She was a Peace Corps volunteer when we were here in 2012. She did the evaluation on both of these kids. They're both deaf, and they were at Nimuga Special. They are now at, what is it? Lamboy Deaf School, both of them. <clears throat> and this is school fees for rescue a child to learn. Once again, imagine that child and the one I'm talking about specifically is named Alele. Alele is part of the 2007 diaspora after the election. His family came here. He is going to be a KCSE, I bet he's an A plane. He was one of our students. He was a Rebecca's student. But he was downtown pushing water on a donkey cart when he should have been in school. He graduated from Wawari. He was in that program that William initiated, and now he's teaching. Before going to university, he's teaching at William's school. So that's a success story. And this, uh, this was behind our house. One of our friends is also in the audience. Uh, Samson Anyango is here. This, this was the house that they had provided for us. And I just noticed that out behind our house, if there's no rain, the maize withers and dies. So our whole game is to get away from uh, dependence on infre infrequent rains and get into sustainable agriculture through irrigation. You know, if you want to get away from just the, the rains, you can bring water with donkeys. Everybody has seen this. Everybody's used it. But by the end of the season, it's very expensive. You know, all your profit is gone in, in, uh, in transportation costs. So what we do, we did in 2012, and this is St. Joseph's, with a tank. We had tank repair on two metal tanks, and we provided a 2,500 uh, liter tank. And hose donations provided water for year-round agriculture at its uh, St. Joseph's schools Shamba right now. And we sent hosing and splitters. We got drip irrigation going there. This is a pump we're going to supply, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Coming right from the lake up all the way to the tank. And this is Samuel Ocomo at that time irrigating some of the, the plants we had growing there. And this, uh, at that time, the, the students from St. Joseph's and faculty, this is Philip, the vice uh, principal, 
We're making things happen. That Shamba project began at St. Joseph's and is now a model. But Isipe came and wants to adopt us as a push-pull. Uh, you'll hear more about that a lot on this island. But Maze is troubled by two things. The uh, stem borer moth and Steiger weed. The push-pull technique from Isipe, which we are adopting, uses desmodium plant between rows of maize, which drives the moth away. They don't like the, the smell coming off of that. And it pushes it to a grass, uh, mulatto grass, which actually kills the, uh, the pupa as it comes up, the third stage of the moth. So you eliminate the problem. And the desmodium actually prevents the striker weed from getting into the weeds of the maize or the roots of the maize, preventing uh, loss of. Uh, they say if you plant 18 bags, you might get three if Steiger's in that field. So, but what we're really about, my project on this island is called the Shamba Project. And we should also have stage one up there. First project we're going to do beyond St. Joseph's is with Mr. Morris O'Weara. His shamba is right on the lake. This is where we will draw the water from. This is his shamba looking up from the lake. Uh, we are going to provide a 5.5 horsepower water pump, 200 meters of hose, and a 2,500 liter water tank and other like uh, equipment. And what do we get for that? They say, why do you do that? Well, the Shamba Project receives part of the land for our exclusive, exclusive use. The farmer benefits, we give them basically irrigation. We get to use part of that land, and all of the produce coming out of our section goes to each of the schools for school fees. We don't take any overhead, and nothing goes in our pocket. Students stay or go back to school by, you know, we, we, we laugh about all the money trees are gone. Have you ever seen a money tree on this island? They don't exist. You know, they're all gone. Somebody picked them. But there's money ground. The money's going to come out of the ground. That's our whole premise for being here. So that's our first project. Our second project, our good friend Mr. Sampson Anyango will be receiving... The same uh, equipment, he pumps from this area, that lake is behind all that, and we will use this portion here of his land, he's provided that to us, once again all the proceeds from that, we'll probably do maize and beans, at least initially, remember this is stage one. The other, that third project, and these three have been funded at this point, uh, at Nyamuga Special School, we have a water catchment uh, plan going to go in. We'll put PVC guttering up here, and we'll put a 5,000 uh, liter tank here. And that's the Eric, the principal of that school, but provides water for the disabled children in Nyamuga. And it's important to, to mention that we were supported by Ken and Irene Wilson, uh, Watson from Canada. They're long-term supporters of Nyamuga Special, and you know, we had, I had enough funding for a 2,500 liter tank. They're providing the extra so we can get a 5,000 liter tank in there, so we're very appreciative of that. The children will have access to water at all times, and that's a big thing when the security man is not there on Sunday or some other reason. Girls especially, children need water in the morning before other activities. And when we talk about entrepreneurship uh, initiative, I remember this is William Aboya. I came to him one day, and I gave him this uh, little planter I'd made. And there's something like 10, 10 watermelon and uh, cucumber plants in there. And I told him, you know, this is what 6,000 shillings looks like. No, 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 it's only 10, no, it's 6,000 shillings. When you take those plants and you plant them, they grow, they give you, say, five or ten cucumbers. Each of those is a certain amount of shillings. When you add them all up, if you can see out there at the end of the harvest, 
We're talking about 6,000 shillings. We're not talking about 10 plants. And a packet of seeds, you know, when they were here last, I had to change the slide. There were 80 shillings for a pack, and now they're 200. So prices have gone up. And this, we hope, uh, especially with the, uh, the high school kids, teach the rudiments of entrepreneurship. You know, how am I going to make money? How am I going to support myself? And when we think about these girls we've sent to um, Joyland High School in Kisumu, when they come back, they've got to have something to do. These are disabled girls, so this is part of it. And there are other things we have in line for that. So, so now we have food. Now we have something to sell. Children can go to school. And we've learned about incentive and self-reliance. That's the whole game. If we're going to be successful here, and like I say, we're in phase one now. Phase two is going to be bringing more farmers online. And if we're really successful, phase three will get uh, French beans and that kind of cash crop in plentiful enough quantity so that the dealers will come here and buy that. And that, that's a big order. You know, I'm not thinking it's going to be an easy thing. But remember what our MP said. You know, I'm the guy with two legs, but I can't see. You're the guys with no legs, with good eyes. Let's get together and make this thing happen. Okay. okay. Like I said, we are the Rizinga Island Children's Fund. We're in North Carolina. We're a 501c3 organization. We support disabled children with school fees, sustainable agriculture. Like I say, we have six now disabled children at school, seven disabled with more waiting in the pipeline. And that's about what I have to say. And I thank you very much for listening. And you'll see more of us in the next three years, I hope. Thank you very much.